MGBs should have a good tight gear shift with very little play in them. This car is in gear and that's the amount of play that's in it and that's entirely unacceptable so let's get it fixed. The other issue with this is the amount of resistance there is to go into uh, go into gear, particularly uh, first and third, and that's because of this boot being too tight. Now, we need to get that sorted out as well, so I have a fix for both of these issues. First things first, we need to remove the four screws around the base of the gear shift here. Now you can see as I uh, loosen these screws how this is lifting up, so that's obviously why uh, what's causing it to be so tight going into first and third. Okay, so now just take the little bezel off here and you can see how much nicer that is going into going into third there. So now that's uh, that's only half the battle, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to lift this up out of our way, which reveals three uh, three bolts which are half inch and they need to be removed. Okay, lastly, we have to disconnect these two uh, bullet connectors here, okay? So I'm just going to take a picture there on my phone so we know which one goes to which. All right, now lastly, and look at that. Ah, we do have a bushing, but uh, it being up there is not much use. It's supposed to be down here. So now, I actually bought a new bushing, so we're going to fit that. So this is a... Uh, this we can put that out of the way for a second. Okay. Yeah, see that's supposed to be on the ball joint. Alright, so let's uh, let's let's take that one off. So that's the that's the cause of the play, is the fact that the the uh, bo uh the bushing was not present at all. So I'm gonna get a cloth, I'm gonna clean everything up here, okay, before we go any further. Okay, so I'm going to get this uh, over onto the bench now, and you'll see why now in a minute. So, if you, like me, have a late car with the overdrive button in the top of the, um, in the, top of the gear shift like this, then this is what you need to do, okay? You have to, you're going to have to pop that off first of all, alright? Um, if you need to take the gear shift knob off, that is. Now, down in here is a, the nut that holds the gear shift on basically is... I'll show you now. If you see down in here, you can see the nut that holds the gear shift onto the gear shift knob onto the top of the gear shift itself, and we need to take that off. Okay, so let's uh, let's do that. Firstly, though, we'll just disconnect our switch by just pulling these two wires off here. All right, so I'm going to just start by loosening that off a little bit, okay? Because I reckon that's a lock nut kind of thing. All right, so there we go. Yeah, so that's that's now got everything loosened up. All right, so I think this should. Ah, yeah, there you go. Look. That's coming loose now. I'm get a smaller screwdriver. Because it's not tight anymore now. I mean, obviously you could do this in the car if you were only taking off the uh, the knob and you weren't, you weren't doing anything with the gear shift itself as well. The whole reason I took it out is because I've replaced that bushing as well. So we're, doing, we're tackling two jobs here. All right. So now I'll just take this off. And all will become clear as to why I'm doing this now in a second. So now we need to unscrew this. Put that there. And now we can take this off. Oh, look, the wire came out. Right, okay. So I need to clean that up as well. I have a funny feeling some of you might know where I'm going with this. For cleaning things like this, a bit of steel wool is, br is brilliant. You can use Scotch Bride as well, it's also very effective. And we see how well it comes up with the steel wool. I may need to go a little bit stronger on it because I want to try and get this as clean as I can. A bit of emery paper. I always thought it was kind of amusing that there's a comedian called Dick Emery. It was painful. Of course, that might have been a joke of his. <laughs> I don't know if it's his real name or not. It's not bad, but it's not great, so I'm going to just keep going until I get that a bit better. 
this would prove to be a much tidier job if it wasn't for the fact that there's the wire going down the outside of it. Um, I would have been able to just kind of leave the gear shift, uh, the, the gear shift shaft uh, polished up and it would have been grand, but uh, unfortunately that's not just gonna, that's just not gonna work. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to use a little bit of heat shrink, but I do have a trick up my sleeve and I'm, you're gonna see now what I'm gonna do. All right, so the wire has to go in here, okay? So that, uh, that's gonna sit like that. And then we're gonna pop our heat shrink down over it, okay? Now, unfortunately, there's writing on the heat shrink, but look, we'll, we're gonna cover that over, okay? So just, uh, you'll see now in a second. Stay with me, folks. I know, I know you think I'm gone mad here, but this is gonna work. All right, I think that'll work. It didn't work. Now, now for the, the big reveal. I got a rubber gear shift boot. Now, the, the wire goes down to the passenger side, so this is the way this is actually going to go. So we're gonna pop those wires up through there. Now, I know the purists are all gonna be kicking off. Mm, the leather one is nicer. Yeah, I know the leather one is nicer, but it doesn't bleed and work, does it? And the problem is all the, all the new ones you get, they're all too tight as well. And that's just not good enough. All right, I am gonna shrink that heat shrink. Ah, don't come off, you bastard. Right, well, let's do that again. All right, the uh, heat shrink went back on again a lot easier the second time around, so. Right, now let's, uh, let's shrink it. You should let your heat gun cool down by putting it on cold. Jeez, the birds in this garage, the noise of them. They're actually in the eaves, so they're, they're fortunately enough they're not pulling on my cars this time around. But anyway, right, uh, that is that. And uh, now what we're going to do is wait until you see this. You're going to like this one. This is a cover that you would put over central heating pipes going up into radiators. Now, obviously, I'm going to cut it to size. That's going to look the business. It didn't look the business. So let's uh, let's get it trimmed. Now I need to cut that uh, heat shrink down a bit. Let's just uh, see where that comes out. It'll be about there. Then the thing's there. So yeah, so we need to... Ah, shit. If by the time I put this all together, I think it looks crap, then I'll take this off. It shouldn't be too difficult to take off. Well, it won't be difficult to take off, but I don't think it's gonna look crap. I think it's gonna look reasonable enough. It didn't look reasonable enough. All right, let's just, uh, let's just leave it without the heat shrink for the moment, okay? I'm gonna actually put the knob on. Uh, so put this bit on first. Far down as we want to go on that. Now, next thing is the bottom part of the gear shift knob. Okay. I think we'll get away with that, you know that? If I pull the boot up a little bit more, we'll see how it is when, when it's actually in the car, but I think it's actually gonna be all right, folks. So now let's, uh, let's get, the, get our little fiddly nut back on. Okay, so straight away I can see that this is going to need to be pushed right the way down the gear shift in order for it to actually do what I wanted to do. So we'll, we'll do that. But um, what I'm gonna do first of all is we're gonna, we're gonna get, the, get a bit of grease into the, um, into the cup in there. I'm gonna get this into, let's see, what's the best gear for it to be in in order for us to get that bushing in. Where is the thing? All right.
All right. So now, a bit of grease, and we'll get that bit sorted out. Now we can worry, we can come back to the situation with the uh, with the gator. All right. So this just pops onto onto here. I'd say it's a fairly sloppy fit, if I'm honest. But let's see how we go when we get it in. Now this, I'm going to tell you folks, is fiddly, okay? But what we're going to do now is, I'm going to get a hammer, and this is the reason why I left the top off this. I'm going to get a hammer and a block of wood, and I'm going to just bang this down, and it should click in. Okay, so let's uh, let's get that there, right? And we're going to just give this a tap and see if it goes down. We're not going to clump it now, but we'll see. That seems to go quite well. But my in <laughs> instinct is telling me that the bushing has just popped. Oh, for f***s sake. Well, that's going to be a right pain in the ass now, that is. It's after disappearing down into the, on top of the gearbox. Oh. How am I going to get that now? Oh, I can just see it. If I gingerly get, it, get at it with a, an angle nose pliers, I might just get it. Anybody ever played that game Operation when they were a kid? Oh, oh, I have an idea. This might just work. Yes, a greasy brush. Right, let's try that again, this time without dropping the bloody thing. Now, what I've done here is I've actually put a little uh, cable tie on the bushing, and this is a recommendation somebody said on a forum, okay? Uh, the idea is that's going to keep the bushing in place until I tap it down into the gearbox, uh, or the gear shifter linkage down there. And uh, then when it's in place, it'll actually just, it'll just move up. So, that's the theory, and I'm sticking with it. Oh, hang on. No. Oh, for feck's sake. What an absolute pain in the face. Right, we'll try it again. I have a funny feeling this is going to be one of those things I'm going to be... There's going to be some serious swear words by the time before I actually get it into place. Oh, you absolute bastard. Oh. How in the name of all that is holy are you meant to get this pox of a thing in here? How did they do this in the factory? That's what I'd love to know. Maybe they just had people who were really good at swear words to put it in in the factory. Dare I say it, I'd say there were probably a lot of people in the MG factory who were very good at swear words. Come on. Fiddlesticks. Let me try the old one, see if that goes on. The old one's not actually worn it, it just popped off and I didn't know that. I just bought a new one because it was cheap. The old one's actually tighter, if anything. I'm gonna put the cable tie around this and see how we go. Yeah, that actually feels a lot, uh, a lot tighter now. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. It literally just dropped in. Oh my god. Right, okay, let's get the plate back on before the Jesus thing pops out. Cuz I will I will actually have a tantrum if it does. Now. Three bolts. Get them in. 
I will say no more about it. Well, what I will say is that gear shift is a million times better. Just get that last bolt in there. Okay, the three bolts are in and the difference in that is night and day. That is absolutely fantastic. Now, next thing to do, let's see if we can get this on. I don't want to hear any guff. Turn it around. It's obviously handed. All right, let's just get the bezel on first here and see how see how we're looking. I know we have to. Well, actually, you know what? I may as well do that now. Uh, connect up the overdrive wires underneath because I can actually get that. Yeah, that's going to work a lot better. All right, so that's the uh, overdrive wires connected now. Now let's see how we're what we're dealing with here. All right, so I've got the screws in at the bottom here, okay, and I'm not happy with it. It's uh, it's compressing on the far side there, so I need to possibly pull it up. Now I'm gonna I'll uh, I'll come back to it in a sec. I need to put my thinking cap on here. Okay, I suppose it's about time I actually explained my methodology here and the reason I replace, I'm replace replacing the uh, leather gaiter with the rubber one. It's a common problem with MGs that the leather gaiter is actually just too tight and that it pulls the car out of gear. Now, I don't know whether it's a design flaw or it's just because of spurious aftermarket parts not fitting correctly, which is the, what the smart money is on in this instance, or maybe it's other parts worn in the car that are actually causing this problem and this, pro this solution is masking the real problem. Now, that's something I want to investigate because my belief is that it's actually the gearbox mount is sagged and as a result because the gearbox is sitting slightly lower the shift is the shifter is sitting slightly lower and the boot is binding up as a result of that now the easiest way to find out uh, quickly if that is the problem is actually just to get a trolley jack under the gearbox lift it ever so slightly and see if it uh, if it cures the problem but uh, the way it is now is unacceptable i mean i pulled up the the gator there a bit and pushed it into third gear hop straight back out again. Now just before I go uh, fluting around underneath the car, I'm just going to try and just slide the gator down a little bit. It's better. It stays in third there, the, the other one's actually first. So. The only, I suppose I could start the engine and see if it stays in gear, but I, I don't see why it should make a difference. The gear's spinning, it may well. <laughs> but I tell you what, the, the difference in how it feels now is amazing. Yeah, as soon as you let off the, uh, like if, if you have the clutch on, uh, or like I'm just riding the clutch a bit there. Now it stays in gear there now, but if I dip the clutch, watch what happens. <laughs> like that, it's just not supposed to do that. Right, we need to fix that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just gingerly apply some pressure on the jack and just see if the gear shift moves rel relative to the centre tunnel. Yeah, it does. Okay, now I'm not going to go any more than that. I'm just going to actually have a crack at how, well, maybe that much. <laughs> uh, okay, it's still popping out. I'm just going to go a little bit more on the jack. I can't understand this. Right, let's just... Now it's, now it's lifting the car, so it can't be any... No, it's still popping out of gear. Okay, so it's definitely not that. Bodge alert. 
Here is a piece of the old rubber inner part of the uh, gator that I removed, okay? Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually put that in underneath this one, okay? And it's going to make space, lift up the new gator to make it a little bit longer, basically. And we're going to see if that makes a difference. If it does, well, at least we know what we're actually dealing with and what we're up against. Is it a bodge? Oh, God, yeah. But, you know, if it works, is it really a bad idea? And to be honest with you, it, this is frustrating. And if it works in the short term, grand. But I will still be looking out for more long term solutions and talking to other people who own MGs. And listening to your comments as well, by the way. So if any of you have actually come up against this same problem and have found a workable solution for it, please do let me know in the comments below. I'd be very happy to hear about it. Because this to me is just codology, <laughs> to tell you the truth. You know, I just, I, I don't understand. I think, it, to be honest with you, spurious parts, I think, is what's going on here. I don't see, I don't believe for a second that the MG left the factory like this. I mean, okay, they left the factory with certain things that you're like, ah, come on, lads, now. But, like, not this. I don't even think it's going to... God almighty, I don't even know if it's actually going to work. And also, it looks shit as well. <sighs> let's, let's just try and get another bolt in up the top here and see how we're... See who are fixed. I wonder, is there something up with the gearbox itself? Like, is there something that's supposed to be keeping it in gear? Like, that's definitely better. It's definitely better, but I'm not happy with it. I'm not doing that. No, definitely not. Okay, so the uh, everything is back together here, uh, as you can see. The camera battery went dead, but to be honest with you, I wasn't doing anything that, uh, that I can't explain to you now. So basically, what I did was I took the gear shift boot uh, off at the bottom, I pulled it up over inside out, and I stretched it as far as I could by pulling on it, basically, and just kept it stretched for a little while. And then what I did was I coated the inside of the boot with grease as well, just so that the, all the parts of the boot inside are slipping over each other nicely, and it actually feels more kind of supple. Now, it's got the consistency of a CV joint boot. I mean, I don't understand why it's that thick, but the upshot of it all is that. It's, the, it's a little bit tight, but to be honest with you, given the fact that it's new rubber, it's going to be split in two years anyway. You can't get decent rubber parts these days. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, it's, yeah, I'd, I'd like it to be just a little bit looser. And, I mean, I suppose you kind of stretch it even like that. I mean... I'll tell you what, the gear shift in this car is feeling a hell of a lot better. And to be honest with you, that wire going down the outside doesn't bother me all that much. Um, partly because of the fact you just can't see it. <laughs> it's on the passenger side and, you know, I mean, look. It's not, uh, it's not the worst looking thing in the world. If anybody ever asks, say it's for the overdrive. Which is also reinstated. So anyway... I think it's about as good as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to just leave it there. And um, yeah, we'll uh, look if if it's not good enough or whatever, I'll uh, I'll pick this up in a future video. Um, next on the chopping block for my videos is um, chasing down why the turbo blew in the camper van. And uh, I have a few surprises in that one, actually. And plus, I've got the bell crank linkage to install on the Beetle and a, a couple of other niceties to do on that. Plus, there'll be a few other bits and pieces to do in this car as well. Uh, but... To be honest with you, this one is driving really nice. So uh, let's leave it there, folks. Thanks very much for watching. I'll uh, see you in a future video. And please do hit the subscribe button before you go because it really does help the channel along and I do appreciate it.
Chat to you soon.